We are looking now at fallout from the investigation into wrongdoing at the top of the FBI during the 2016 election. Former FBI lawyer Kevin Kleinsmith pleading guilty yesterday in federal court to making a false statement in the first criminal case stemming from John Durham's probe. Joining me right now to talk more about that and what is next is Georgia Congressman and House Judiciary Committee member Doug Collins. And Congressman, it's always a pleasure to see you. Thank you for being here. I know you and your colleagues worked so hard on this investigation, the uh, the origins of uh, this Russia probe. Your reaction to this first guilty plea from Kevin Kleinsmith and what it tells us about where we are in this? Well, the, my first reaction, Marina, is great. It's a great morning. And to look and see that somebody is being held accountable. How many times have you and I talked about be, somebody being held accountable for what they did, for what they did to the campaign, the spying, the, the infiltration, the trying to disrupt the not only pre the Trump candidacy, but the initial part of the Trump presidency. So it's a, it's a vindication in such a way, but it's just the first, what I believe, of more to come. And I think that's what's scaring, though, uh, the folks who are being investigated, the, the cabal of, of Comey and McCabe and Strzok, Lisa you know, Page and Peter Strzok and these folks and Brennan and Clapper, because they know that this is actually getting investigated because they never thought it was going to be. So the first step is in, in now done. I think we now need to continue to move on. And I'm looking forward, hopefully, to more indictments from Durham investigation. Yeah, isn't it interesting that Sally Yates was there in the spotlight at the DNC trashing President Trump, saying that he's using his intelligence agencies and the DOJ and weaponizing them, exactly what her colleagues did. Did that strike you at all, seeing Sally Yates up there? She obviously wants to get into politics and is not just a, a Justice Department official. Well, her getting into politics now means that she wants to lie about her past. I mean, I get it looks like what she's wanting to do right now because she didn't want to acknowledge that she was a part of this. And for and to get on there and discuss this in the way that it's been portrayed, and especially her role uh, coming in, is really disturbing. I mean, when you have a group of folks that we've now heard, even on your show as other, that they won't even admit that they were actually doing this to the Trump campaign and they were doing it actually in the first part of the presidency. When James Comey has the audacity to sit with an interview and talk about infiltrating the White House in the early stages because he knew he could, that is the very epitome of abuse of power. That is something that when we go back... I don't want, I'm so sick of the mainstream media who has ignored the Kleinsmith issue as if it never happened, as if it meant nothing. What they are ignoring is the fact that this man changed email, went before a secret court, and spied on an American citizen. That is wrong, and for them to ignore it is simple malpractice. Yeah, it's just amazing. And look at John Brennan. He is digging in even until the end. He's about to sit down with John Durham tomorrow on Friday, and the <laughs> FBI is under pressure. You've got this bipartisan Senate intelligence report, which finds fault in the FBI's handling of the 2016 Russia investigation. No kidding. Specifically, it's use of the yeah. Steele dossier, uh, which could have included Russia uh, disinformation. And, you know, when this came out yesterday, the Senate intel report, John Brennan tweets at Marco Rubio and says, no, it showed collusion. I mean, he keeps saying it. And it's really disturbing. Disturbing, given that he's the former head of the CIA, Congressman, what is he doing going into this John Durham interview tomorrow? I've never seen someone who should be more concerned about a Durham, an interview than him and actually getting on there and tweeting about that. You know, I'm not sure what's in their coffee. I'm not, I think for most of us, if we don't drink coffee, you know, straight up, you know, just black, we put a coffee or, you know, with cream or sugar. I don't know what they're putting in their coffee, but they're trying to block out a whole time frame in which they want to let the American people believe they did not abuse the power that they've had. We've talked about this for many, many months and years now about what has actually happened. And the thing about it is what's really interesting, Maria, is for those of us who thought who would criticize you or criticize me or others who would come on and talk about releasing transcripts and showing the pattern that developed, what is amazing to me now is is that every more is every piece of information that comes out confirms what we were uh, suspicious of, confirms what we were finding out. There's nothing that is not confirming that the FBI and, and the corrupt cabal actually did what they did. Every time we get more information, and now we've started seeing guilty pleas and, and indictments, it just confirms what we've done. And yet they sit there as if it never happened, wanting the American people to believe, along with their, their friends in the main, and the other media outlets, the liberal media outlets, that it never happened. This is a serious issue that finally we're starting to yeah. get some resolution on.
It's just extraordinary. All right, Congressman, let me switch gears, ask you about a stimulus or the fact that we don't have a stimulus deal. Both sides reportedly dealing with internal divisions on how to proceed. The House is set to vote on that $25 billion package to address funding for the Postal Service on Saturday. What are you expecting? Take us through the next couple of days. The next couple of days is nothing but political theater, Maria. The, the, the Democrats are now trying to uh, gin up an issue on the Postal Service, which they actually turned down money earlier to, to that they were asked for. They turned it down. And now all of a sudden they're making up a story that, that deals with uh, concern about the election and concern about the vote. They should be concerned about the election. If you're watching the, uh, the convention this week, they ought to be concerned that no one is going to vote for Joe Biden because they're not buying it. But now they're trying to blame it on the Postal Service and things that were just made up. So this is just simply political theater theater, the, pre the speaker wanting to get the House back in session to vote on a bill that will go nowhere and do nothing, but yet dominate the headlines and make people fearful. This is actually, in my opinion, Democratic voter suppression. They want to make people fearful of actually going to vote, and they're doing so in a way that uh, they're trying to have the cover of the Postal Administration, when at the end of the day, this is not what needs to happen. We need to actually be looking at real solutions for our businesses, our small business, our, our schools, and others to get our economy opened up, our schools open back up, and our, our society back to normal, safe procedures that we have. Well, and yet you've got Democratic mayors and, and, and governors out there who don't want to reopen the economy, don't want the kids back at school. Michelle Obama the other night said all we hear from Trump is chaos. Well, a lot of Democrat mayors and governors are allowing the chaos because they're not stopping it and they're not supporting the police force. Then you had Kamala Harris. Sure, she's making history last night as the first woman of color to be a vice presidential candidate for a major party. Uh, she was extremely critical of President Trump during her expect acceptance speech once again, Congressman, uh, even as we see all of these uh, Democrat mayors refusing to return law and order to their cities. Yeah, where, where I believe that President Trump and the Republicans are offering uh Hope in, in, a, in a, a time in which we are in, have been in a crisis. They're looking to, we're looking to the future. The, the Democrats and the, even in these speeches, instead of a, a, encouraging uh, hope to get out of it, they're encouraging fear. When they're encouraging others to be fearful of getting out, to be fearful of opening up, that's not what America is about. America is about moving forward. America is about our families and our country actually taking the reins and saying we can overcome this. And all I'm hearing from the former first lady and others is a fear that uh, they're losing control, fear that if we let this open back up, that we're going to lose the power that we have in an election year in which, remember, all they are focused on is beating Donald Trump on November 3rd. They do not really have any other desire except to use every situation to say that this president is not doing what he should be doing. And frankly, they should be ashamed of what they're doing because what they're, they're setting up is people to be fearful of, of things that they, that they can take care of, that we can control, that we can have safety measures put in place, but they would rather have the fear so to win an election than actually try to encourage people to get back to work. Yeah, I mean, I made that remark earlier uh, after day one that it feels like, you know, there isn't any solution. Any real, you know, policy ideas coming out of this DNC, which would uh, w which would suggest what you're saying is that it's really more about holding on to power, keeping their grip on power. Congressman, it's good to see you this morning. Thank you so much. Thanks, Maria. Take care.